Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. This is Matthew, your video person, and we are playing Yoku's Island Express. Now this was described to me as Metroid meets Pinball, which is obviously too enticing an offer to turn down. So I'm jumping in right from the start. Um, I've actually played a chunk of the game already, but I thought I'd show you from the start so you could sort of see how it, how it grows and develops. Um, in case you're wondering, and you probably are wondering, uh, yes, that is a dung beetle. You play a dung beetle who is also a postman, uh, who also has to move around the island as a pinball. It's one of those games. Uh, even though you play as the dung beetle, uh, when it comes to the pinball stuff, obviously it's the ball that's, that you're catapulting around with the, with the dung beetle attached to it. Oh, let's get that. Now, in true Metroid fashion, it has a massive map uh, with a, a vague destination to get to. It really looks like you're going to be going quite a long distance. But one of the things I found about this game, uh, one of the things which is quite interesting with the pinball-wise, is how fast you move around the map. You know, it really kind of punches you around at quite a speed. Um, I am playing with a control pad just because uh, it's slightly less noisy than my mechanical keyboard clacking away in the background. Um, the very basic controls, you can move the dung beetle left and right, but you can also control any of these pinball bumpers, which are the blue and yellow things. Uh, the yellow one is on the right uh, trigger, and the blue things are on the left trigger. And basically that's it. It's really, really simple, as pinball tends to be. Um, and it's all about kind of finessing it with where you hit the ball and where along the bumper you strike it. Uh, as you'll see as we go on, there's a lot of kind of other pinball elements in it, like you have these little bumpers that kind of push you around. It does some really nice things with those that kind of send you on these great big kind of uh, arcs around, around the world, uh, which is very, very neat. I'm a big fan of virtual pinball, have been since the days of Space Cadet. Uh, back on the, well, the free Windows game, uh, but I'm also a very big fan of uh, Pinball FX, uh, particularly the Empire Strikes Back table, which I don't know if you've played it, but it's absolutely exceptional, mainly because Darth Vader pops out of the table and uh, uses his force powers to crush some pinballs, which uh, he never did in the films, but if he had, they would probably be remembered as classics. So one of the key things in this game is that you collect fruit. Fruit is your currency, which is used to kind of unlock new bumpers around the level um, that you'll sort of see here. In true pinball fashion, lighting up different elements of the scenery causes more fruit to pop out. Uh, there really is a lot of pinball logic in this, more than I thought there was going to be. I thought it was just going to be hit the bumpers to jump, but there's actually a lot more going on. A lot of the puzzles, uh, I call them puzzles, uh, are these sort of self-contained areas where it kind of locks you in and it's more obviously a kind of traditional pinball table and it's about getting it in the right place um, using the trajectory. I'm actually going to come back in here just to light up some of these things and show you what happens. Oh, fruit. You can't get enough fruit in this game. It's going to be very useful for opening up shortcuts, things like that, because it wouldn't be a Metroid game. Uh, if it didn't have lots of shortcuts. Of course, in the, the Metroid games themselves, uh, Samus uh, wasn't really big into her fruit. In fact, we never saw her eat anything. Uh, I'm assuming she, she does eat. Oh yeah. I love it when you hit things over and over again and loads of fruit squirts out of them. <laughs> That's incredibly satisfying. And if you also enjoy this, you will definitely enjoy Yoku's Island Express, which does that trick a lot, but it never gets boring. One of the big challenges uh, with playing pinball, real or virtual, is replicating your moves over and over again. You know, that's the kind of art of it. And that's really where the puzzle element of this game comes in, because it tends to give you lots of uh, items in awkward places that you have to hit with a very specific bumper hit. And so you have to, to keep, keep doing that again and again and again. And it's all about kind of finding the sweet spots. Uh, you've also got these crystals which shatter in a very satisfying way. 
it's just a very tactile game on the whole. Like it, you know, the, the the physics of the ball are nice. You know, it feels um, slightly more. Um, you know, it's cartoony when it wants to be, but it also feels quite precise. Uh, there's a bit of gear gating stuff uh, where you find new powers and they let you get further into the map. So this is the first thing you get, which is a noise maker, like a little party horn, which kind of acts as a very basic melee attack for smashing up bits of the scenery, getting more of a, getting more of that sweet, sweet fruit, and also annoying local foxes. So, in case you've forgotten, we're trying to find a mushroom to feed to the dragon so we can get into the village. There's lots of little interactive bits in the scenery. It's very attractively drawn. Actually reminds me a little bit of uh, Ori and the Blind Forest um, in a few ways. There, It's got a similar obsession um, that game has with collecting keys to unlock doors. Um, but also just the art style, it's very nice and layered, lots going on. Not quite as pretty as Ori, I don't think, but it's um, very neat nonetheless. Ooh. I like when you smash these crystals, it just feels nice. See, I really like moments like this where you just get sort of shot around lots of bits of scenery. I know it, you're not really interacting with it, it's all automated, but it has got that kind of ping, 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 ping satisfaction of a, of a pinball table. So here, you know, things are getting slightly more interesting and there's multiple bumpers on the screen, so you have to hit... Ooh, yeah. It's all very gentle at the start. Later on, you get, like, the spike patches beneath the bumpers and there's some kind of little collectible trinkets that require you to string together quite complicated uh, bumper moves. That's the mushroom you want to feed the dragon. Weirdly, if we pop over here, you can also get a poison mushroom, um, which creates a little bit of a moral dilemma about which you're going to feed to the dragon. So, uh, you know, as a, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not a huge moral quandary. I mean, the, the dragon's going either way, but it's a, a nice little touch. It's got quite a, it's quite kid friendly, but there's some some quite uh, funny writing in some of the characters. See these little trails going around the place. Yeah, later on you see a lot of other pinball elements, like there's a puzzle which basically involves multi-balls where you're having to hit these little gremlins into holes. Um, I don't think we'll get to that, that's quite deep into the game and I don't want to um, show off all of the exciting things to come, you know, there's some discovery elements that you want to do for yourself. Yeah, so this is the bit where we have to decide whether we're going to feed him the nice mushroom or the nasty mushroom. Um, let's give him a nice mushroom. Ah, oh, that's good. I feel better about myself. Yeah, you'll find later on there are some bumpers that have a kind of huge currency cost to, to unlock. You may not even have the right size wallet, you can get wallet upgrades. Um, which are kind of hidden in off the beaten track. Yeah, this is the thing I was saying, but it's a bit like Ori in the Blind Forest, and there's a lot of kind of collect three mystical keys, and then a thing will open, and you'll go through the thing, and it all works out. Yeah, you're also collecting these little things. I actually haven't discovered what they're for yet. You find some totems that require you to have 10 or 15 of them to unlock. Uh, I'm assuming there's, there'll be some sort of hidden level content or some other sort of stuff it will kind of whisk you off to see. Um, for the time being, though. Oh yeah, that was one of the wallet upgrades. Yeah, if we actually zoom out, you can see we've already done quite a lot of the map. That's what I was talking about, like how fast you move around it. And I think that feels, um, you know, it's quite fun to look at all the kind of area you've gone. Oh, God, I love zooming out and seeing 2D maps. 
It's a real. I've been a real sucker for it. When I was a kid, I used to uh, buy a couple of. There were a couple of like walkthrough magazines for like Mega Drive games, and it would just print the levels out on the page as just 2D maps. Even if I didn't have the games, like I'd just like to look at them and go, "Oh, that's what Ren and Stimpy on the Mega Drive looks like its entirety." Uh, there's something very satisfying about seeing it. I mean, it's you can't seem to zoom in, so I don't know how useful it is in terms of finding missed trinkets and things but it's, uh yeah very satisfying ticks ticks one of my weird boxes these are definitely my favorite bits where it locks you into like a smaller arena and it, you know there's spikes now so you've got to watch out for those and it's just about kind of working out what you've got to do um finding the keys these little keystones they'll be dotted around in slightly hard to get places How do we do this then? Okay, that's straight out the middle then. Yeah. Cool. Sorry for the silence. Just trying to concentrate. Getting in the zone. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how the health works. When you die, you go to this really... Well, I think you die. I, I fell onto some spikes and it went to a really weird cutscene where these two kind of dark gremlins uh, made some kind of death counter go up, but I'm not entirely sure what it signified. So I've opened the door and now I can move on. We're trying to clean out a base of... Uh, it's got these little kind of uh, dusty sprites. Oh, this bit's lovely. I'll let you watch this bit in silence. What a good title screen. What a nice way of doing it. Four shadows, a lot of stuff we're going to see. I like that. The logo also is very uh, Yoshi's Island, if you ever played that. It's um, very. The game's obviously nothing like it, but the font, oh, it's, it's close. So, with those little smoky things scared off, we can proceed to climb the level. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, B-Line, that sign, reference B-Line, that's the fast travel system, um, which I actually haven't unlocked yet. <laughs> this chap, he acts as the, um, like a sort of safety guard in pinball when it pops up between the bumpers. And when you unlock him, he'll kind of protect you from spikes, he'll hover between the gap, give you a little, um, a little break when you need it. Thank you. Nice of him to take one for the team. Cheers. In true Metroid fashion, lots of little shortcuts open up as you go along to make kind of backtracking possible. I get the impression there's going to be a lot of little powers you unlock. I, mean, I think we'll get to one in a bit where you unlock um, a sort of slug power up. It's always quite fun seeing how these things unfold. I think the best Metroid games for me, um, or games in the Metroid style that is, uh, you don't necessarily know what the powers are going to be from just looking at the map. You know, they kind of twist the map in surprising ways. I, I think it's always a bit weak when you, uh, you know exactly what's going to happen based on the, you know, there's a big flaming wall and it's obvious you're going to get an, a watery, a watery power. This is a really nice touch. You can get this telescope, which zooms out and just lets you sort of see the level in more detail. You can sort of see the little challenges to come, see the things you're going to do. Um, it's a really nice touch. Also just lets you drink in some of that lovely art. Ah, oh, nice. I've hopped us ahead a little bit uh, just to see some slightly more advanced levels. So you can see here we've entered the Slug Gardens. Um, I don't currently have the power I need to proceed. This is one of those weird death sequences I wanted to mention. 
what's this? What's all this about? These little goblins and like there's a number. Slightly mis very confusing, very mysterious. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, uh, to to proceed here, we need to break through these uh, big grey rocks that you can see at the top, but we don't actually have the power to use those yet, so we need to get the uh, slug gardener's tools. Um, this is just an example of one of the slightly more complicated things in that there's double sets of uh, bumpers, so you have to kind of string together the right hits and make sure everyone's going in the right direction. Oh man, alive. Blow at this bit. quite intrigued to see how uh, speedrunners deal with this game because you know I don't know how many tricks there are to actually kind of get past it you know it seems quite quite carefully gated um, but I would like to see people string just you know all their hits into one beautiful combo and, and just nail it from start to finish could be quite fun to watch uh, I'm not going to be that person I'll be watching those videos on YouTube but that's okay I'm not I'm not so proud We will get there, honest. Alright, I can tell that I'm messing up lots because it's giving me the old uh, the old spike protection guy. <laughs> Very condescending of it. Yeah, this is an example of where you can string together lots of little bumper hits. So you have these little spinning signs as well that you have to uh, repeatedly hit uh, to get them to spit out the next set of keys. Like I said, there's a surprising amount of um, pinball furniture that you'll recognise. It's nicely done. And you get to squash some slugs while you're at it, which is always satisfying. Apologies to any slugs watching. Oh, that's it. Oh, so nice. Pop in here, and we're going to get the first sort of big power up that you that you uh, get in the game. She also has a brilliant name. It is the Slug Vacuum. What this allows you to do is basically absorb slug juice uh, by sucking them in, and then when you've got slug juice on the ball, you can punch through those slug doors. But it just gives this little section of the game a really nice feel. Makes it feel a lot more like a um, like a little self-contained dungeon, which I always like in in uh, sort of Metroid games where there's like a, a clear theme to each area. Oh, the slug vacuum is letting me down, or am I letting the slug vacuum down? So in moments like that, that's where you, ha you know, because the slug juice wears off quite quickly, so you just have to be able to nail those precision shots a lot faster. That's where it feels more like traditional pinball. And there's some stuff later, like I said, with these, uh, the multi-balls, where you're trying to fill these holes quite fast. And there it's about kind of hitting the kind of rhythm, those repeat shots again and again. 
That's that to me feels more like a, a classic pinball game. And that is Yoku's Island Express. You know, when it was pitched to me as this Metroid meets pinball, I thought, uh, you know, that's probably going to be a bit gimmicky. I don't think it's necessarily going to deliver on, on, the, on, the, on the pinball side of things. But actually, with my time with it, the thing which has impressed me the most is just how, how much of pinball there is in its DNA. You know, it's not just used for jumping. It's not just gimmicky. You know, it really does have the, the rhythm and the rules and the logic of it. And as the game goes on, you see there's more and more of that stuff. Um, it's a really interesting game. I've actually had I've had a huge amount of fun with it. Really looking forward to digging into some of the later stuff, seeing where the powers go. I mean, you know, the map is absolutely massive. You know, I want to see what's behind all this stuff. Oh, it's always, always exciting uncovering it. Um, and we'll get to find out soon because the game is out on the 29th of May. And if you stick around with uh, Rock Paper Shotgun, uh, you'll be sure to hear more about this one. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click subscribe uh, for more pinball fun. Well, I say pinball fun, I can't actually guarantee you there's going to be many more pinball games on the horizon. But there'll be lots of other good stuff. So please do subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.